All right, we're going to talk about Newton's law of universal gravitation. All right, so once upon a time, scientists, astronomers, started asking questions like, if the planets are orbiting around the sun, what force is keeping them in orbit? Why aren't they just flying off? What force is keeping the moon in its orbit around the Earth? Is it gravity? Could this force of gravity that we know about and that Newton talked about be a universal force? And Isaac Newton actually did say, gravity is a universal force. It's unique to Earth. His law of universal gravitation states that every particle attracts every other particle in the universe with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. So all of that summed up in an equation is F equal big G M1 M2 over R squared. So a lot of times... Um, you will see the M's. Here you see it as a big M and a little, little M. Sometimes you'll see it written as M1 and M2. They're interchangeable. It means the same thing. F is the force due to gravity. Big G is our gravitational constant. It'll never change. It is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then, of course, the first mass is mass of object 1. Second mass is mass of the other object. And R is going to be the distance between the two objects. And when I say distance between the two objects, I'm talking about distance from their centers. Okay, so the center of one object to the center of the other, just like in our photo up here. Center of the Earth to center of the moon. Here's another way to look at the same equation, and we got a little visualization here. So here's our object one, object two. Notice that they both exert a gravitational force on one another, and those forces are equal and opposite to each other because they require the same exact equation. Here we see it written as M1 and M2. All right, so any object sets up a gravitational force field that extends from one end of the universe to the other. A visual representation of the Earth's gravitational force field is shown in the figure. The force vectors point towards the center of the Earth and become shorter in length as their distance from the Earth increases. Okay, so our gravitational force fields point towards Earth. They're shorter the further out you are because you have a smaller gravitational pull the further away from the center you are. And then the closer to the center you get, the larger they get. Okay, so a little concept check. At which point, um, which of these would the gravitational field be the strongest and at which point will it be the weakest? Well, hopefully you say that over here, A is going to be our strongest, the closest to the center of the Earth. And then the furthest one out, it's going to look like, to me, it's going to be C. Actually, I take that back. It's going to be D. Didn't see D sitting over there. D definitely looks like he's the furthest one out, and he has the smallest arrow, so he's the weakest. So why exactly does the moon not fall straight down onto the Earth? Well, because of gravity, because of the law of universal gravitation. The Earth is exerting, exerting a force of gravity on the moon, and the moon in return is exerting a force of gravity on the Earth. So they are counterbalancing each other, keeping each other at a specific distance away. The law of universal gravitation is known as an inverse square law. So what that means is that... As we change um, the radius, then the force changes by the inverse of that squared. Okay, so as you see, as our force decreases here, our distance increases. Okay, our distance that it will read or pull from the earth. All right, so here we go. We've got two spheres of mass, 35 kilograms, 60 meters apart. What force does one exert on the other? So we're going to need our universal gravitation equation. All right, so there's our equation and for universal gravitation, and then here's our G. So if we just go plug in 35 for both of the masses, this for G, and then 60 for our R, and then square the R, we should get... 2.27 times 10 to the negative 11th, and then it's force, so that's Newton. So that's the force that they exert on one another. 
if the mass of one is tripled and the radius quadrupled, how does the force change? Okay, so if we were to take the mass of one of them and triple it, what would that do to the force? So here is our equation. All right, so if I triple this, it should triple the force, right? So at this point, we have tripled the force. Now let's look at our r squared value. Okay, and if we quadruple r squared, what's that going to do to the force? That's going to cut the force by 1 16th. So we have 3 over 1 16th. which means it'll be 3 sixteenths change. So the mass would times 3 the force, and then the radius would cut it into 1 sixteenth. All right, let's look at another problem. So if we have two spheres of equal mass, and they have a force of gravity of 7, point, uh, seven times 10 to the negative ninth exerted on each other, and the distance between them is seven meters, what is the mass? So we're gonna look at our universal gravitation equation here. Okay, we know that our force is seven times 10 to the negative ninth. G is 6.67 <laughs> times 10 to the negative 11th. And then we know that we're looking for our M's so that's going to be m times m, or m squared. And then the distance is 7, and we're going to square that. Plug all this in the calculator, and we get... All right, so I got 7 times 10 to the negative 9th, and that is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th m squared over 49. I'm going to cross the 49 up, and then I'm going to divide by that number. This gives me 6.67 equal to m squared, and then I square root that, and I get my, oops, my masses are equal to 78.7. And that's kilograms. So both of them are 78.7 kilograms. All right, let's look at some applications of gravity. So according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity of a massive star can become so strong that nothing, including light, can escape. This is known as a black hole. There's a drawing of a black hole over here. Um, and we have a variety of evidence that tells us that black holes do exist. So basically around the black hole, uh, light is going to be bent. And then inside the black hole, gravity is going to be so strong that light cannot escape. All right, another application of um, Einstein's theory of general relativity and universal gravitation is it predicts that any amount of mass um, can bend light at least a little bit. So astronomers have found that very distant objects seem to produce multiple images in photographs. And this is because the light is being bent by galaxies or the black holes. This effect is shown in the figure over here, and it's referred to as gravitational lensing. So we can see an image from Earth of all of these things in many different ways because the, it's being bent around them. So... This object right here, it's being bent around this, and we're seeing it in this location, in this location, even though it's actually located in this location.